The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. Parties have already informed that this afternoon and tomorrow session, the chamber will be hearing testimonies of witness Mr. Long Noren. Before we proceed to the hearing on uh, his te testimonies, the parties are and the public are informed that during these proceedings, and uh, due to the fact that uh, this witness is an elderly person and who has experienced some health issues and that the proceedings have to go through the audiovisual link uh, from his residential area to the court, disruption might occur during the course of the proceedings. It could have been resulted uh, from the technical glitch uh, regarding the AV equipment or due to his uh, deteriorating health. The West Sioux unit and AV unit have already been asked to send their people to the location to facilitate the smooth functioning of this portion of the proceedings. And according to the technicality of the video link, and that uh, the witness has to give testimony from a remote area, the simultaneous interpreting service will not be available. The interpretation shall be conducted consecutively. In light of consecutive interpreting, parties who are putting questions to the witness are advised to be very cautious and mindful that uh, they should be precise and due diligence is paid to the interpreters so that uh, the message can be properly conveyed. Good afternoon, Mr. Long Noren. Mr. Non Long Noren, do you hear us? Response. Question again, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Long Noren, do you hear us? Do you hear what I am saying, Mr. Long Noren? Says the President. Mr. Nyam Samnang, are you Nyam Samnang who is sitting next to Mr. Long Noren? Nyam Samnang responds, Yes, I am. The President, Mr. Nyam Samnang, are you 
representative from the Vesu unit responds, Yes, I am. The President, with regard to this remote participation, how many people have been assigned from the ECCC to assist uh, him? Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, there are four people assigned to assist uh, uh, this uh, functioning, and that, uh, there, are, there are two people inside this room and two outside. I am here with TCW395. Um, the President, uh, Mr. Long Noren. Is Long Naren your real name? Response. My name is Long Naren. Question. Do you have any alias name, alias for example, other name than Long Naren? Response. I am also called Rut. The President, thank you. How old are you this year? Response I was born in nineteen thirty eight. Anyone can do the calculation for me, please? The President, thank you. Since you uh, told us the exact uh, year you born, it even better than tell us how old are you. How, uh, where, where do you live these days? Response. I live in Dong Village, Malai Commune, and Malai District, Bantimian Che Province. The President, thank you. What is your occupation? Response, I am a farmer. I am a peasant, indeed. Question, what is your father's name? Response, Long Puong, he's deceased. Question, what is your mother's name? Response, Mao Ting, she also deceased. Question, are you married? Response, yes, I am. I have five children, three daughters, rather three sons, two daughters. The President, Mr. Long Noren, according to the report by the greffier of the trial chamber, you have no parents, relatives, or relatives uh, at marriage or uh, other close relatives who have been joining as the civil parties. 
Is that correct or related to civil parties? Response, no, Your Honor. The President, uh, thank you. Have you taken an oath? Yes, I already have uh, done it, says the witness. The President, uh, in this hearing and as a witness before this chamber, you can refuse to respond to any questions or make any submission against yourself or you are entitled with the right not to testify against yourself or self-incrimination. In other words, you can refuse to make any or to testify or to give any testimonies which can be held against you. And uh, secondly, since the interpretation needs to be conducted consecutively, you are advised to leave a break or to pause so that uh, the interpreters can fully convey your message through their rendition. Do you hear us? Response, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, I would like to go to the bathroom. The President, uh, please be informed that uh, we understand your situation, aging situation. If you would like uh, to go to the bathroom, indeed uh, you can go uh, immediately as you wish. Counsel for Yangsari, you may proceed. Um, Mr. President, could you please uh, put uh, another question to him? Because uh, when you asked uh, whether, have, uh, whether he has taken an oath already, uh, he seemed to have misunderstood the term oath. Because in Khmer, the term oath is uh, easily mistaken for letter. And when he responded that uh, he has already done it, perhaps it means he has received the letter rather than has taken an oath. Thank you, Your Honours. If I can just take this opportunity, bearing in mind that it's consecutive interpretation rather than simultaneous, um, it's clearly going to take double the time uh, to examine this witness, and, and also in relation to the video link and his health. I would ask, given the time that the prosecution has till the, till the end of the day, I assume that will be four o'clock, and then at the end of the day, if Your Honours if we could provide you with an assessment of how long further the prosecution would need. Um, this witness, of course, is quite significant and uh, we would like to capture um, all of the knowledge he has on this indictment if that proposal is acceptable to your honours.
The President, uh, good afternoon again, Mr. Long Noren. Mr. Long Noren, I would like to read uh, this again to you. During the course of your testimony, you have the right to go to the bathroom. You only need to tell the court before you leave for the bathroom. And uh, with regard to your statement, which is not yet clear as uh, indicated, uh, uh, we would like to put the same question again, whether you have already taken an oath before you are here to give testimony before this chamber. Do you hear us? Mr. Long Noren, have you already taken an oath? Response uh, Yes, I have indeed uh, taken an oath. The President, when did you do that? Uh, respond, I have just done it just now. The President, thank you. Mr. Co-Prosecutors, according to Internal Rule 91 bis, And according to the order of the questioning of the witness, with you have now uh, been given the floor to indeed uh, put questions uh, to this witness. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honors, and thank you very much. Um, as a preliminary uh, issue before I start, because the witness is uh, on the video screen here, uh, um, uh, I would request uh, respectfully if it is possible for me to do my questioning uh, seated in this case so that I may be able to see the witness. The President, Court Officer, could you please assist uh, to make sure that uh, interpreting is um, already functional? The President, International Co-Prosecutor, actually the problem 
with regard to the interference of the noise in the background has not been resulted from the technicality or the equipments at this place. Indeed, uh, there has been uh, the sound of music in the background because at that location there was uh, there is a ceremony and there are loudspeakers uh, uh, um, projecting on this uh, music uh, could be heard. Now, uh, they have already asked uh, the organizer of that ceremony to turn away the loudspeaker so that uh, we would not hear uh, this uh, background music again. So uh, the witness is allowed to sit, uh, remain seated while responding to questions. You may now proceed with your question. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Long Naren. My name is Dale Isaac, and uh, I will be uh, asking you some questions this afternoon on behalf of the Office of Co-Prosecutors. Can you hear me okay? Mr. Long Narin, can, can you hear me? I um, said, uh, Long Narin, I heard uh, somebody were talking, but I didn't know what uh, was it about. Uh, Mr. Long Naren, I, I was introducing myself and I wanted to make sure that you can hear, hear me okay when I'm asking questions. So if you have any trouble understanding or hearing my questions, please tell us and, and I will repeat them, okay? Uh, your Honors, I'm not, I'm not sure whether you can hear me, but I'll start and let's see how it, how it works. Mr. Longeren, if, if you can hear me, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was to tell the court about your educational background. Mr. Longner, and I'm not sure if, if you heard me, but we, the, the first thing, first question we have for you is just to tell the court about the schools that you went to, uh, the education you received when you were younger. The President, Mr. Nyam Samnang, can you hear the questions being put by the International Co Prosecutor? Tell the court, Mr. Nyam Samnang, you yourself, do you hear this? Mr. Nyam Samnang, indeed, Mr. President, I hear what the Co Prosecutor is asking. What about Mr. Longnerun? Uh, does he also hear that? Uh, 
long-term responses. Uh, I have, I I know that the question is being put, uh, but uh, I cannot really understand what it was about. Are, are you? Uh, is someone translating? Are you hearing my questions in Khmer, or are you only hearing them in English? Your, Your Honor, I'm not, I'm not getting a translation of what, what he's saying. Okay. Let, let me try one more time. Um, Mr. Long Narin, um, could you tell us uh, where you went to school when you were young? Response. When I was young, I uh, went to study in Czechoslovakia. How long did you study in Czechoslovakia? Response, I was there for 10 years. Could you tell us what, which years? Response, I was there in 1960 and I continue to remain there until 1971. I went to Beijing because King Sihanouk uh, appealed for people to go to Beijing and I went there so that I could uh, work in, uh, for the country. During the time you were in Czechoslovakia, what did you study? Response, I studied uh, gymnastics. at uh, the Prague, uh, at the city of Prague. And during the years that you were in Czechoslovakia, did you have any contact with representatives of the Workers' Party of Kampuchea, which became the Communist Party of Kampuchea? Response. At that time, I did not have any contact with any political parties in Cambodia. Were you invited uh, by anyone uh, particularly uh, to go to Beijing, or was that a decision that you made on your own? Response. 
At that time, the king, former King Sihanouk, appealed, and I had to come to Cambodia through Beijing as a result of that appeal by the king. How long were you in, in Beijing, uh, Mr. Long Naren? Mr. Long Naren, I cannot really hear your question. The President, uh, Mr. Samnang, if you hear the question and that uh, Mr. Long Naren cannot catch the question, could you please assist him by repeating the question more clearly so that he can respond? Mr. Samnang, yes, Your Honor, I will exactly follow your instruction. <laughs> Response. I had been in Beijing for six months. I had been there until the government, the Krung, returned to Cambodia. Did, did you join the resistance while you were in Beijing? Response. When I was in Beijing, I had joined the resistance, the movement uh, headed uh, by King Norodom Sihanouk. Perhaps you could just tell the chamber, how, how is it that you joined the revolution? Was there, was there a process that you had to go through in order to join the revolution? Response. I joined uh, the resistance when uh, the resistance was under the royal government in Beijing, and I worked at the uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry. Who, who was it that hired you to work at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Beijing? At that time, response, the graduate uh, from abroad would be asked to join the royal government of National Union of Kampuchea. And uh, His Excellency Saran Chat was uh, in charge of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We did not need to apply for the position because people who 
graduated uh, from a school in a foreign country would be able to join at the office, at the office in Beijing, and that uh, we were supposed to help uh, with uh, the facts, the uh, writing of letter and other tasks. Do you know uh, in Surrey? Response. Initially, I had never known him. I only knew him when I worked at that ministry. I knew him very well then. Okay. Can you tell the court when you first met Ing Suri? I respond. I met uh, Mr. Ian Sari when I attended uh, or when I worked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Beijing. I used to see him when he returned from France, but uh, it was just a normal contact. I would ask him uh, how he was, but nothing politics uh, were being discussed when I met him before. Could, could you tell us, when you say that you, you had met turned from France, uh, what time, what years are you talking about? Answer. I cannot recall the year. When you said that he was had returned from from France, returned to where? Where was it that you that you had uh, met Mr. Ing Suri before the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Beijing? Answer. Well, I did not meet him in uh, Beijing. Actually, I met him in Phnom Penh. He was uh, walking with uh, his wife uh, during a ceremony or festival or so, and a friend of mine uh, knew him, so he uh, just uh, told me that uh, that person was uh, Yeng Sari. Then I greeted uh, Yeng Sari uh, on that day, and that was all. W was this before to Czechoslovakia in 1961? No, I, I cannot recall the, the year, the exact year I uh, first met uh, Yeng Sari. But we did not say anything at all when we first encountered. That first meeting, the first time that you met Yeng Sari, did you understand, what was your understanding as to who he was?
at that time, they told me that uh, that person was Yang Sari. That was all I knew about him. Who is it that told you, the, uh, identified Mr. Ng Sari for you? Answer. If my memory serves me well, Thach Chiang, who was a student from a pedagogical school who was in my batch as well. Thank you. Did you have any contact with Mr. Ng Suri during the 10-year period that you were in Czechoslovakia? Answer. When I was studying in Czechoslovakia, I did not have any contact at all with Mr. Ying Sari. When you met Mr. Ying Sari in Beijing, uh, what was he doing there? When I was in Beijing, Yang Sari was the special envoy of the royal government of National Union of Cambodia in charge of foreign affairs. At some point, did you join uh, the Workers' Party of Kampuchea or the Co Communist Party of Kampuchea? Answer. I don't remember it but it was at a later stage once we uh, conquered the war against the American. Who, uh, who was it that introduced you, uh, uh, invited you to join the Communist Party of Campuchia? Answer. Back then, uh, those who worked for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we all together joined in the resistance movement against the Americans. So we all uh, joined uh, the party. There was no formal invitation, but we voluntarily joined. Let me clarify something. When, when you say that you joined the revolution, do you mean by that the same as becoming a, the same thing as becoming a member of the party? Well, we actually uh, joined uh, the party subconsciously because we together joined uh, the uh, party because Cambodia was at that time um, violated. Uh, 
a good answer. Could, could you tell the chamber what you did uh, during in Beijing? And sir, when I was in Beijing, uh, I worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and my main responsibility was to prepare letters, uh, the uh, diplomatic uh, letters which established links from one movement to another movement across borders. Do you recall uh, when it was that you left Beijing, Mr. Long Naren? Answer. It was in sometimes in April, but I do not uh, remember the the date, the exact date. <clears throat> April of uh, which year? Uh, Mr. Long Nguyen, April, uh, I don't know if you heard me, April of which year did you, was it that you left Beijing? I left Beijing after the, the 17th of April. Uh, after Cambodia gained independence. Was there a period prior uh, to April 1975 where you lived and worked in Hanoi? Upon my return, I went through Hanoi and I met with Her Excellency Ying Tiret, who was working in the radio of the National United Front of Cambodia. I stopped by Hanoi and I worked for this radio station for about six months. Then I came to Cambodia. Could you, could you tell us what the, what the function, uh, what did that radio station do? What was its function?
The radio of the United F Front of Cambodia is to broadcast the resistance movement to Cambodian living overseas. How many people worked uh, at that radio in, uh, in uh, Hanoi? I cannot recall it uh, correctly as to how many people exactly working uh, for the radio station back then. Hanoi. Was Ng Tarit in charge of the radio station? Yes, that was correct. Ying Tirat was the director of this radio station. Who asked you to work at the radio station? No one proposed me to work at that radio station, but uh, coincidentally, uh, the radio station was in the process of recruiting uh, staff uh, to work for this station, and I came by and I joined this radio station. Who was it that recruited you to join and work at the radio station? Answer. No one proposed me or recommended me to uh, this radio station. I voluntarily joined uh, this radio station and Mr. Ying Sari used to tell me that radio, this radio station serves the resistance purpose. And he also told uh, me that uh, before I when to Cambodia, I should uh, spend some time serving this radio station. So I decided to join this radio station. What did you do uh, during the period that you worked for the radio station? Answer. I was a translator. I translate my uh, text into Latin. And I was also in charge of uh, broadcasting educational uh, programs, educating Cambodian people who were studying in Hanoi, and they uh, we also uh, broadcast the idea of creating school for Khmer in Hanoi to study. So I was actually in charge of preparing program, Khmer programs as well in this radio station. What languages did the radio station broadcast in? Uh, 
That station broadcasts in Khmer language. You you indicated that after you worked uh, at the radio station, you returned to Cambodia. When you returned to Cambodia, where did you go? Answer. Upon my return to Cambodia, Cambodia was fully independent. In other words, Cambodia had conquered the war against Americans. Mr. President, may I ask for, for leave uh, to go to the restroom? The President? Yes, you may go to the restroom. The President, uh, since it is now an appropriate time to take the adjournment, uh, the Chamber may take 15 minutes break. <laughs>